Trying to parse out structured content from the text output of a large language model like ChatGPT is an exercise in regular expression hell. And for a while, GPT has supported JSON output, but while you could give it a schema, you couldn't really rely on it giving you back that schema. But now, GPT supports structured outputs, which means that you can give it a JSON schema and it will 100% give you output in that structure, which is huge. Take this recipe application that we're gonna build. Recipes have a structure. The name is a string. The ingredients are an array of objects where each object has an ingredient and a quantity, and the steps are an array of strings. It's structured. So in this video, I'm going to show you three ways to use the structured output support. First with the Versal AI library, then I'll show you how to do the requests using OpenAI directly so you find out how that actually works. And finally, I'll show you how to stream responses back, which is critical to giving you that really good feel that we like to get from a chat application. And also, there's been a Shad CN CLI update, so we'll check that out as well. Let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is build our application. So I'm going to do npx shad cn init. So why am I doing shad cn init? Well, shad cn now has the ability to build Next.js applications for you if you don't have one already. So we're going to use that as a way to build our Next.js application. We're also going to bring in sidebar 01. That's a template that gives us a nice handy sidebar nav menu. Let's check it out. So it says we don't have a project in here. Let's go and build one. We'll call it recipe app. Of course, all of this code is available to you for free in a GitHub link in the description right down below. All right, now I'm going to bring that up in cursor. And I'll bring up the console and we'll run it. All right, doesn't look much standard from a standard stock Next.js application. But what you can see is over here, we have a new dashboard route that is automatically created because of that sidebar 01. Let's go take a look at that route. Oh, that looks good. Okay, so you got a center section here for the content, and you got this sidebar section over here. That's automatically set up, and all of the ShadCN components have automatically been brought in to support this sidebar. So that's a really nice way to both initialize your Next.js application and also set up your components. Now, one thing I didn't particularly like about this is that it automatically puts app at the top level. I'd rather we get the source directory with the app inside, but maybe that's an option that I just didn't know about. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this layout from here into the layout itself. So I'm going to bring in the app sidebar as well as the sidebar components that is automatically created. And then down in the component, I'm going to use that sidebar layout. All right, let's hit save. And now if I go back to main. Now we can see that our Next.js starter page is now inside of that sidebar layout. Nice. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is just trim this down to just the sidebar layout that we're going to use for this example. To do that, I'm going to go over here into our components and then app sidebar. And there's a whole bunch of data in here as well as some layout right at the bottom. For that whole sidebar nav, all we really want is this nav main down here. So I'm just going to replace all this with a much simplified version. In addition, I'm going to go to these search results over here. We're not going to use those. And I'll hit save. And there we go. Now I've got our little sidebar on the side that has the three different variations of the structured output test that we're going to build. All right, so let's build first off this Versal AI test. We'll use the Versal AI toolkit to talk to OpenAI with this new structured output format. So the easiest way to specify the structure of the output that you want to build is with Zod. So we're going to bring in Zod first. And I'm going to create a new file in here called source recipe schema. We will define using Zod the schema of the recipe. So we'll import Z from Zod. Then we're going to export the recipe schema. We're going to use z.object to define the schema of the object. Now that object is going to have a name field in it. That name field is going to be of type string, and then we're going to describe that string. And this is the way that we hint to GPT what we want in that field. In this case, we want name to have the name of the recipe. Then we want an array of ingredients, so we're going to use the dot array method to 
create an array, and within that then also z.object, because we're on an array of objects, and then within that each object would have a quantity and an ingredient. And then we have our array of steps. We use z.array to define that, z.string to say that we want strings in that array, and we describe it as text content in a markdown format. So now that we have our schema set up for our recipe, and we're going to use that across all three of these, we are going to start building out our Versal AI route. So we're going to go over here and delete the dashboard and then create a new route called Versal AI. And then within that, we're going to create an API route and then within that route.ts. All right, so inside of there, we're going to handle a post request to that route endpoint. That's what we're going to use from our UI. And now to handle that, we're going to bring in the AI library as well as the AI SDK's adapter for OpenAI. So from AI, we're going to bring in generate object. That's a new way of requesting from that Versal AI toolkit a structured object from, say, in this case, OpenAI. We're going to bring in that recipe schema that we just created. And then to start fielding out the request, the first thing we're going to do is get the prompt from the request. So that prompt is going to have whatever type of recipe they want, for example, chocolate brownies. We're then going to call that generate object. This is actually going to be the request to the AI. So we need a model name. So for that, we're going to use a specific version of GPT-4.0. It has to be after that particular date in order to get that structured output support. And then we're going to give it the schema, the schema that we created using Zod. And then we're going to give it the prompt. In this case, we're asking the LLM for a recipe for whatever the user wants. In this case, it's either going to be the prompt or if they don't say anything, we'll give, give them chocolate brownies. And then we'll just take the output of that and return it as JSON. Super easy. All right, now that we have our API, let's go create the page that then calls it. All right, let's start off with our Versal AI page. We'll bring a new state because I have to have a way to track the prompt. We'll set up that prompt and default it to spaghetti carbonara. And then we'll create an input field that manages that prompt. Let's give it a go. And there we go. We got our input field looking good so far. Awesome. Next thing we want to do is make a call to our AI endpoint. So we're going to bring in the use object hook from AI React. It's an experimental hook because this is a new feature. Awesome. And it's also on AI slash React because that AI library from Vercel actually handles multiple platforms, not just React. All right, we'll bring in our recipe schema and we'll connect that to that use object hook using schema. We'll give it the API endpoint, Versal AI API that we just created, and we'll give it an initial value. And from that, we get back the object, which would be the data, as well as a submit function, which is how you actually make the call to the AI endpoint, and then is loading, and that tells us whether we're loading or not. All right, so we'll disable the input if we're loading. And then when we hit enter, we want to submit that prompt. And then we'll JSON stringify a little div at the bottom there, and let's give it a try. Spaghetti carbonara, I'll hit return. And there we go, we got our data. And it's in that structured format that we want it back. Awesome, okay. Now we just need to put a UI on this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a loading spinner. So I'll go over here into our components and then add a loading spinner. And then I'll bring that into our page. And we'll say, if we're loading, then put up that loading spinner. And next up, I think the customer doesn't really want to see the JSON for the recipe. What they really want to see is a nicely formatted recipe card. And that's where the ShadCN stuff comes back. And this is really cool. You're going to love this. So back over here in V0, I asked it for a recipe card. I went into their new chat interface and just asked it for a recipe card. I gave it the name. I gave it the ingredients and the steps. And it gave me this output. And this is really cool because it actually uses ShadCN as the base component framework. You can see that up there with that at components UI card. Awesome. And if you go over here to this recipe card, we can see kind of a preview of it. And check this out. This is really cool. I can go and take this URL and I can go back over here, my cursor, and then I'll go into here and I'll do npx ShadCN add, and I'll give it that URL from v0. So we already had a card. I don't want to overwrite that. So, and it gave us a new recipe card file. How cool is that? Let's go take a look at the implementation. And that's exactly what we got out of v0. Awesome. Of course, what we want is data driven. So we're going to bring in the recipe schema as well as Zod. And then we're going to bring in the recipe as a prop. We're going to change the card title to be data driven. We're going to change out this recipe ingredients section. 
to be data driven. And we're going to change out the step session to be data driven. Now we do have markdown as the step format, right? So let's go and bring in React Markdown. And then we'll bring in that markdown component. Cool. That's looking good. All right, let's hit save. Now let's go over into our page and let's bring that in. We'll bring in that recipe card and then we'll use that. We'll do a little TypeScript hack in there with the as any. And then one last thing, let's just make sure that we have a recipe. All right, looks good. Let's give it a go. All right, we'll try again with spaghetti carbonara. We got our loading spinner. Awesome. Very nice. Now that we got the versatile AI version working, you know we're not going to stop there. We're going to go figure out how that actually works by doing the same thing without the versatile AI library and going directly to OpenAI. And then we'll go on to make it stream. Because that's what we do here. We have unique advanced content, and that's what we do on this channel. And speaking of advanced content, my Next.js course, Pro Next.js, is finally out. And early reviews are calling it exceptional. Thank you so much. But it's not just for experts. The course starts with building and deploying a full AI chat app. You'll learn all about the fundamentals of routing and RSCs and API routes and suspenses, and then go into advanced concepts like parallel routes. Then we get into styling and CSS, where we cover all of the options and how they perform, as well as component libraries and which ones you can use. And of course, you get all the code for everything. The course also covers architectural options, how to organize your code, maintain code quality, example code for trpc grpc graphql rest and how to manage all that with multiple front end back end configurations and there's advanced stuff you won't find anywhere else like there's a section on cacheable server actions and so much more i'm really proud of this course and i know you'll find it really valuable and it's now 40 percent off for this early access period and so this is the time to get in because i'll be improving the course adding content and keeping it up to date with all the changes in next.js and whatever comes out of the next.js conf so jump on over to ProNextJS, check it out. Today, you get those two free tutorials on state and forms management, even if you don't buy the course. And of course, you'll get that 40% off deal if you decide to. All right, picking up where we left off, we want to go and create our own version of this synchronous output. So I'm going to create a new file in here, synchronous API route.ts. And into there, I'm going to start off with the basics of the next server, our recipe schema, and the model name that we want to use. Then because we're going to directly connect to OpenAI, I want to bring in OpenAI and the Zod response format from OpenAI helpers. So let's go and add in OpenAI directly. Now, just like before, we want to get the prompt from the input. We're going to go and create an OpenAI client, and then we're going to request a chat completion from that OpenAI client. We're going to give it the model name like we did before. But in this case, instead of a prompt, we're going to give it a list of messages. This one's from us, the user, and we're going to say that we want a recipe for that prompt. And then to say that we want that specific JSON output, we say that we have a response format. That's the output of the Zod response format helper function that we get from OpenAI. And then we give it our schema that we had before, as well as a name for that, in this case, the recipe schema. And then because that comes back as text, we want to use JSON parse to then turn that into JSON, which we will then send back using next response JSON. So this is a bit more raw than we were doing before with the Versal AI. It was just handling a lot of these little nitty gritties for us. All right, now that we have our API, let's go build our page. So create the page.tsx file. And this is largely what we have before, but we're not going to bring in that use object from Versal AI. We're just going to handle that on our own. So we're going to use use state for the prompt like we did before, but we're going to have our own use state for is loading as well as that recipe. Now down here, when we handle the enter, we're going to call a handle submit function. So let's go build that handle submit. And that handle submit will start off by just initializing the state, then calling that fetch to the synchronous API, then packaging up the body. And then once it gets back, it'll set the recipe to whatever was in that JSON payload. Let's hit save and give it a go. All right, looking good. We've got chocolate brownies as the default. Get our loading spinner. And there you go, chocolate brownies. But we did have to wait for it, right? It was just kind of chunk, 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 and then boom at the end. And what users are really expecting from LLMs nowadays is they want that streaming result. So how do we get that? Well, we're going to go and take that example that we just built and further refine it to make it streaming. And that involves changes both on the API side as well as on the UI side. All right, so we're going to create one more directory called streaming. Again, we'll start with the API. 
Now, most of this looks exactly the same as we had before with the synchronous API, except that we were going to say that we want to stream the response back. So in this case, the response is going to be a stream. So how do we handle that? We're going to create a new readable stream, and we're going to essentially convert the output of the OpenAI stream into just a string of JSON text that just slowly gets bigger and bigger and bigger as we go. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to get each chunk of the response from OpenAI. Then we're going to get the delta content from OpenAI. That is basically the additional tokens as they go. And then we're just going to keep on sending those out to the stream. And then finally, at the end, we'll just close once we're done. And then to adapt that back to Next.js, we're going to create a new next response. We're going to give it that stream. And we're going to say that we are doing a chunking transfer. All right, let's go create the page that wraps this API. Now everything is the same as it was before. The only difference is going to be in our handle submit. So let's go build out our handle submit to handle the streaming. Now the handle submit just starts off just like we did before. We're going to call streaming API. It's going to be a post. We're going to give the prompt. And then from that, we're going to get back the response. And this is where it starts getting a little bit different. So from here, we're going to get a reader for the body. That's going to allow us to get back that body asynchronously as a stream. So each token is going to come through as its own part of that body. And then we're going to create a text decoder. We'll use that to decode the text coming back off that stream. We'll create two temporaries. One's called data. That's going to hold basically all the data that came back. And then parsed is going to be the parsed recipe. So that's going to be the JSON that we create as we go. Then we're going to cycle around in a while loop, and we're going to just keep on awaiting a read from that reader. And then once we get back the response from that reader, it's either going to be done, which will break out of the loop, or it's going to be some extra data, in this case, the value. And then we're just going to use that text decoder to decode that value and add it on to the data. So now that we've got our data string, what do we do with it? Well, it's going to be a partial JSON. So we need some way to parse JSON that may not yet be completed. Well, good news, there's a library for that. It's called partial JSON. So we'll import that, and that'll give us a parse function. We'll use that parse function to parse that data, and then we'll set the recipe to that parsed output. All right, let's give it a go. We'll go back over into our streaming variant. Again, we'll ask for chocolate brownies, and let's give it a try. <gasps> that is so cool. It's streamed back automatically. Awesome. And that's just a much better, much more interactive UI, particularly on large data sets. You really just don't want to have it block, block, block until it shows something. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into how to use structured outputs with OpenAI in a streaming way in your Next.js applications and all the cool new stuff that we saw with ShadCN. We live in amazing times. If you have any questions or comments, please be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. And go check out that pronextjs.dev course. I am super proud of it. I think it's fantastic value for the money. Jump in today. In the meantime, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. That really helps the algorithm a lot. And hit the subscribe and bell if you want to be notified the next time a new one of these comes out. I'll see you next time.